cicadas are talking about it today. We are off to the library in just a second to return a couple books and also to go stop by the P.O. box and pick up anything that might be over there. I'm feeling good enough that today I might actually have a P.O. box opening stream this evening. We'll have to see how things work out because Chips and I have also been playing Stray on our own and we've also been playing the new Kirby game. And now we're going to go look for tadpoles before going to the library, before going to the P.O. box, and today basically feels like magic. <laughs> oh, oh, there's another one! Oh my gosh, it's so small! Oh, he's so tiny, darling! He's ridiculously tiny! I, oh my gosh, how can you be so small? Darling, oh, he's smaller than my thumbnail! Oh! Look at him! Oh my gosh, he's so cute! These must be the tadpoles we saw! They're like the size of these ants. They're so tiny! Look, I mean, there's a gumball. And, like, there's a freaking pine needle. And then there's this tiny little frog. Yeah, that's officially the tiniest frog I've ever seen. What about you? Just about. It's, it's, it's smaller than, like, the cashews I eat. It's so small. Did you take your... There are tiny little frogs jumping out of our way. Oh my gosh, you would think those are bugs, but they're not, they're frogs. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere, darling. Oh, we came to see what the tadpoles were doing. This. This, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you think they're bugs, but they're not. There's just like dozens and dozens. Look at it, the whole ground is just moving with froglets. Oh, this is so cool. Wow. I wonder, like we saw, we saw tadpoles bigger than these guys. Hmm. So I wonder if you lose some of your tadpole mass. You do, you do. Then, oh, there he goes. I see you, oh, there you are. Oh my gosh. It's kind of the... like sand where you got to shuffle. I know, like you have to shuffle. Oh, is that a little frog? That is a little frog. Right by my foot. Okay, we got to be really careful, darling. Yes, very careful. Hi, little guy. Hi. Oh, he's just all hunkered down. He's like, I am, I am not anything. I am a tiny pebble. You don't see me? Darling. They look just like the pebbles. Like, I don't know how can I express the size. Like, there's my finger. Here's the frog. Oh. Oh. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you. One last frog for the road. He's like three times the size of the ones we saw. Oh, easily. They're so big. And he looks like a different type to my untrained, not a herpetologist eye. Yeah, you're pretty cute, huh? Oh, you're cute. Frog season. It is frog season. Bye, little friend! He's the Okay, that was really fun. Stopping by to look at the frogs turned into going to the P.O. box and I have a whole bunch of cute little mail. I might do an, um, like a P.O. box unboxing tonight. We'll have to see if I have energy for it because it is also so hot. But we saw tiny little frogs, which was so cool. And there were still tadpoles. And then we went and we got stuff from the P.O. box and then we got stuff from the library. And we even stopped by Mindful Merchant, which is a zero waste, almost entirely vegan like household goods store that just opened up it's so awesome I have some rosemary and sage soap that we got from there that smells amazing and is made by a local person uh, and then we also got these really cool <laughs> these are toothpaste tabs so instead of having the 
tube toothpaste, which is like a plastic tube you use once and then it sits around for, you know, several <laughs> like hundreds of years before it dissolves, uh, if it ever will. But instead of using those, they sell these adorable little jars and you can get little toothpaste tablets. So you chew these and they foam up and you brush your teeth. And I got a new toothbrush because I thought that would be kind of cool. So now there is a bamboo toothbrush that's packaged 100% uh in no plastic like that's the whole point of mindful merchant is to try to be as zero waste as possible so now like they sold the little jar and filled it up for us and now whenever we need more we just take the little jar back and you get a little discount which i think is amazing so i love going there and i got some cool library books look at that name hurricane lizards and plastic squid the fraught and fascinating biology of climate change and i flipped through it and it seems pretty interesting because it's talking about different ways where animals are starting to either adapt or fail to adapt to climate change, um, which is usually a really depressing subject to say the least. I have plenty of very depressing books about that. Uh, but I'm also just fascinated to see the cases where there are adaptations or where there's very clearly been like no adaptations uh, and we're losing species here and there. But some species like are changing really, really rapidly. Like I think they had, yeah, there's some, some lizards on some of the Caribbean islands who have really like in the last 50 years started to change how they look. And it talks about how this collared flycatcher, which is a type of bird, used to have this pressure to have this really cute uh, patch on the front of their head be really big. But the times are changing and the patch is now getting smaller. I don't know how that's related to climate change yet, but those kinds of things are just really fascinating to me to read. So I always try to get at least one nonfiction book when we pop by the library. And then I have a cool interlibrary loan on a book of poems that actually came from Kentucky, which blew my mind that they like sent it all the way to North Carolina from Kentucky just because I wanted to read this book of poems from an author that I'm interested in because I also love to read poetry. And these two are really cool because I've heard a lot of things about the Sea of Tranquility, which is a book that spans across the centuries from the past into the future. And it actually touches on um, like the fate of kind of like actually a hurricane, lizards and plastic squid, the fate of our planet and humanity in a unraveling climate environment, but it goes across the ages from early in English society to two centuries later, to centuries ahead of that. Uh, and it's supposed to be just really fascinating. So I really love those concepts. I think I would probably class it as kind of like a sci-fi literary fiction, and I've had it on my list for quite a long time because I'm not usually into books that have big time jumps like that. I prefer to stay with like one family and follow their legacy for a long time if my Sims 4 legacies couldn't tell you guys. So I'm going to be interested to see the common narrative that threads all those together. But what really excited me is when I picked up Sea of Tranquility, there was a brand new release they had there called Walk the Vanished Earth. And this actually is the same concept. I was so surprised. They were published just a few months apart. So clearly these two authors were working on it at the same time. But we jump from like the 1870s to the 1980s, then to the 2020s, and then all the way into like the 2070s. And you're following the lineage of this family from when they're like settling on the Kansas Plains for the hope of the new country, all the way to where Earth can no longer be inhabited. And we have a girl named Moon who is raised by two aliens on Mars. And she's trying to decide if she wants to, now that she has come of age, she, uh, she could become a mother if she wanted to, if only she understood what a mother is. Alone on Mars with her two alien uncles, she must decide whether to continue her family line and repopulate humanity on a new planet. Like what? So that sounds really, really fascinating. And I'm really looking forward to kind of combining these two books. I've heard nothing about Walk the Vanished Earth because it's like fresh out of the oven. Uh, but I think that their, their themes are so similar. Reading them back to back will just be really fun to see how they're going to handle these decades and century skips with the same common theme. So I'm looking forward to those. 
And if those books weren't enough to keep me busy, I'm actually starting a new readathon challenge today hosted by the Bookish Discussion Society, which is an adorable discord full of people discussing some of my favorite books. Uh, I stumbled on it because I have been roaming all over booktube lately. The last time I checked a few years ago, booktube hadn't really kicked off and now it's just spread everywhere and I am so in love with it, which is why our wild sage corner of the universe is uh, trying to become Become a little bit more of a booktube spot as well just to fold in the fact that of course I need to feed my imagination tons of cool books mostly related around fantasy and mostly related around really unique and interesting fantasy which is where the T Kingfisher readathon comes in and that is what I'm going to be starting today it goes all the way from July 22nd to July 31st so it's not that long of a time period but T Kingfisher's books even though they are fantastic, are also usually not very long themselves. So I have high hopes that I'm going to be able to get through quite the bevy of stories. And the readathon's challenge is to try to read as many books as you can, but they have this cute little graphic that I love that has five spaces on it. So I thought I'm just gonna aim for about five books and see where I go from here. And T. Kingfisher, there's so many reasons that I love her. One of which is that I actually stumbled on her as Ursula, which is her real name, on Twitter talking about her chickens that she raises in her garden that she has tripped out with all sorts of like really cool plants and heirloom tomatoes as well as lots of cool chickens and some preciously adorable dogs uh, as well as some like creepy art that she likes to put around the place which I think is really cool and she raises all of them in the Appalachian Mountains which is actually one of my favorite places in the world it's kind of like a dream spot for a cottage one day for Chips and I and I just followed her for the chicken content for years probably a year and a half actually, before one day someone like retweeted something at her and she commented on it thanking them for liking her latest book. And it was The Seventh Bride, which is one of the more surreal, like almost horror fantasy short stories I'd read that I was like, oh, that was okay when I read it. But The Seventh Bride has stayed with me for years because I've never read anything quite like it before or since. And that's when I realized that Ursula, my chicken loving Appalachian mountain living like random gardener I followed on Twitter was actually T. Kingfisher, <laughs> one of the authors that I have loved the books of. So that was a really funny like <gasps> secret identity reveal. It felt like kind of having someone reveal that they're like one of your superheroes, uh, which was really funny. I guess like how often does that happen, right? Like you follow somebody, you know them for years, and then it turns out you know them as a whole separate persona. And it's not like they've been hiding it from you. You just never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really fun and I'm really looking forward to the readathon because she's had two new books come out this summer that I actually know I'm going to love so much I got the physical copies of and I to this point in my life at, at this point of my life don't really have a lot of physical copies of books they could take up all the books in my my room and all the books that I possess could take up only maybe one and a half bookshelves right now not because I don't read a lot it's because my ebook <laughs> library is hundreds and hundreds of books thick. Uh, most of the books in our house actually are my husband's like history books for his work as a historian and a philosopher. Um, but I've always tried to keep our books, the books I have kind of on the lighter side, just so that it's easier to move. Because until recently, my beloved husband Chips and I have moved almost every year. And before that, I moved almost every year when I lived with my aunt as her nanny. So for me to get a physical copy of a book basically is one of the biggest votes of confidence that I know it's going to be good that I can possibly come up with. And so that is why I now have to start off my readathon the two books I am looking forward to the most from T. Kingfisher. And they also happen to be the books that have been released in the last couple months. The first of which is Nettle and Bone, which has fantasy grim fairy tale tropes that apparently have some like fluffy little bits hidden in. We have an animal companion who is actually a skeleton dog. We have got a princess trying to figure out how to save her last remaining sister from the king who definitely killed his her other sister as his first bride. 
And this princess is not some fainting violet. She is a over 30 year old woman who has spent most of her life living and working hard in a monastery and is now ready to walk into the lands of the doomed and the damned in order to build a, a bunch of bones into a companion dog to start a long process of working on a set of witches requirements so that she can figure out just what is killing all her sisters and save her last remaining sister from this king that is bullying their kingdom. So yeah, there's a lot in there and knowing T. Kingfisher that it is not going to be straightforward, it is going to definitely like make my hair raise a few times because she has such a great element of writing in a way where you are kind of in that grim fairy tale world again without it being too grim. It's never, it, I would never describe her work as grim dark. There's always an element of fluffy to it that is threaded through taking you into situations that could be a horror sort of mood in less talented hands. Because I'm not a horror book reader, <laughs> which is ironic because she also writes horror and I will be reading one of her horror books for the readathon, but she never takes it into gory places that are bad, like for me to read, that make me feel like really uncomfortable. She always takes you into places where the elements of the story read like the kind of fairy tale that should make you kind of glance over your shoulder now and then, that, that leave you with both the thrill of the adventure and also a little bit of a chill of the uh, otherworldly. So that is what I'm really excited about. Also, I love the fact that finally, after like all summer of trying to find a good fantasy book, I found a few, but all of the, the main characters in most of the fantasy books are like early 20s or teenagers. And reading the first preview and realizing that this princess is over 30 was why I instantly bought this. And one of my favorite things about her two copies of the book I have right now are these amazing illustrations that she actually did herself because she has illustrated several children's books. Uh, she has got several prints. I just I think it's beautiful. It's also green. I am biased to that. So that is the book I am the most excited about for this readathon and will probably be sitting down after I finish saying hello to you guys and introducing this readathon uh, and reading next to my husband in just a few minutes here. So yay, I'm very excited. And then the other of her new books probably could actually be called a horror. This is What Moves the Dead. This one is really something I, I have no idea what I'm getting into because we have a set of, of people who are going to go visit a town where their friends live, where everyone has been dying and yet there seems to be something making their bodies move. There seems to be this unraveling mental state amongst their friends. And this is basically a retelling of what I've heard of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. From, I might be wrong, it's one of Edgar Allan Poe's poems though, and his stories retold through T. Kingfisher's like lens. And it just sounded cool and it has something to do with fungus and I love fungus. And the art just was so stunning. Not only this art, but also the art that she drew in the front and then the book itself like was really pretty and i'm not normally somebody who focuses on how pretty the books are but it just drew me in all of those elements drew me in to where i want to know what's going on here so that's really exciting also quick note i almost forgot to tell you guys in, in nettle and bone the book is actually dedicated and this might be an inside joke maybe it's going over my head i just think this is funny because i spent so many years following her because she had cute chickens on twitter but it's dedicated to strong independent chicken a bird in a million i can only assume that might actually be a real chicken knowing her <laughs> but those are the two that i am the most excited to read those are the two i got physical copies of because i know i'm going to love them and the other three that I'm going to be focusing on are actually some of her other fantasy and horror genre. The fantasy genre being a lighter, I think like young adult middle grade read called The Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, in which there's a world where everybody gets some sort of magic power, or at least a lot of people do from my understanding. And the main character
character got the magic power of magical baking, which is not as thrilling as she was hoping, and it doesn't seem to be a very world-changing until, of course, the time comes for her to change the world. She has apparently got a gingerbread man as a sidekick, as well as a pet sourdough starter that is omnivorous and likes to eat everything and everyone. That was all I needed to know to know that I'm probably going to really enjoy that and I just love the idea of like the wizard's guide to defensive baking like come on that just sounds so cool. So I'm going to be reading that and then I'm going to be diving into what I think some people have told me or at least told me through booktube are some of her fantasy romance series which like what? <laughs> I don't know if I got that right because the message has been so muddled about like the themes in some of her books. So there is a book called Paladin's Grace. Fun fact, I am a sucker for paladins. It is just my favorite fantasy class to follow for the angst of watching somebody who is really honorable and tough but committed to a specific creed have to wrestle with the reality of the world never being morally white or black. It's always gray, so what do you do about that? So I'm really looking forward to reading about a paladin, but this is a paladin whose god has already died. He has no one to serve anymore and he ends up watching over somebody who has assassins coming after her. And and from there, I hear just great things about the first book and the next two that follow it. So I'm going to be trying out Paladin's Grace. And then the final book that I'm going to be trying out for this readathon, if I don't end up like blitzing through all of the Paladin's Grace trilogy, is actually The Hollow Places, which is another one of her horror books that I know nothing about other than it has a young girl go to her uncle's house that happens to have the threshold between magic and horror and she steps through. And a lot of people have said that it's a really great book to read if you want something that gives you a little bit of a tingle up your neck of like, ooh, that's kind of spooky, uh, in the horror genre to dip your toe in without being way too deep into the horror genre, which is what I want. I would love, especially on these hot summer days, something where I can just kind of sit down and have that chill, that thrill and that chill of reading something that's spooky, but not unnecessarily gory and not too spooky. And I think that that is going to uh, definitely be the hollow places. So I'm very excited. <sighs> but all right, yes, so clearly I'm going to be very busy in between reading all of these things and also keeping up with our Warrior Cats reread a thon, which I am keeping up in the background. I just, I usually am reading like six or seven things at a time. <laughs> That's just how I am. But I did manage to get my way through the third of the Warrior Cats books today. So I think we'll at least finish arc one by the end of the summer, especially if I can get my hands on more of the amazing audiobooks. They're so good. They're like my preferred way to go through the Warrior Cats series now because the, the narrator for them is like one of the best narrators I've ever heard in an audiobook. I am really impressed. <laughs> he has brought the cats and their like battles to life in a way I never expected. Um, so I've been loving that. But yeah, so I've got books to read. I need to do a lot of recording because at the moment I'm still working my way through Indling and Stray and Bug Snacks and trying to pick up all of these other fun series that are just rolling by. The Sims 4 High School comes out and I am happy to have many diverse, wonderful interests, but they definitely keep me busy. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe just sneak a chapter or two of this and then get back to work. So thank you guys so much for joining me on a fun little random day and I will update you guys on how the readathon goes because I am really excited to see how these super unique stories will just add so much to my creativity and imagination through the summer. Alright guys, stay curious. Bye-bye.